make it big so we can see it. There goes it. All right, guys, let me know if you can hear me and see me. In addition to uh, wrapping Enzo's paw, we have also had some technical difficulties. So if you can hear us and see us, if you'll let us know in the chat, that would be awesome. Okay, Riley says it's good. All right, so yeah, some of you already know Enzo hurt his paw yesterday um, while they were at the park. We think it was like he stepped on like a frozen rock or something and basically the little pad that's like farther up on the arm, like kind of close to the dew claw, it cut hit part of that off and then like underneath of that. So um, Will's gonna show you guys what it, it looks like so um we took him to the vet and they like cut off the part that was like kind of just hanging there and cleaned it off really well and whatnot but it was bleeding last night so we decided to kind of wrap it up and then they went to the park this morning so when they got home which was not very long ago we had to like rewrap it up and he's like totally not a big fan of that um so sorry that we're late and in addition to that, we had some technology issues. Okay, let's see what we got. Um, they're saying that there's double audio on the stream. We're working on it, hang tight. They're saying possibly from the second camera. Yeah, probably. He's trying, did you fix it or no? I can fix it, give me like two seconds. All right, give him a minute. He's going to fix it. Never thought about that. No, Nick, we don't have sound on in the background. We have two cameras running today versus having one. So we're thinking that that's probably what it is. Let me, he thinks it should be good now. So somebody, Nick or Riley, if you can let me know if it's fixed now. Okay. They're gonna let us know. Okay. Phone okay. Gonna let me work any. I'm gonna go lay down. I'm gonna just tilt the head. The head tilts. Oh, you're welcome. We answer all the DMs and all of the comments and everything like that. Uh I pretty much like throughout the day, anytime that I have a few minutes, like that's what I'm working on and Will pretty much does the same thing. So we make sure that we answer every comment, every, you know, DM, everything like that. They said it's fine for them now. Perfect. Hi, Holly. I'm glad that you're here today. I loved your letter. We read it out loud on, I feel like multiple videos. I saved it. I that letter was like the best thing ever to me. So I'm so happy that you're here today. And then Will did your potty training video. I think that went up last night. Um, so that should be up there for you to watch. And I'm so happy that you're here with us. Okay, I got my German Shepherd pup yesterday. He's seven weeks. Any training tips on no leash walking? Um, we have a lot of people that ask about if we'll do like a video for off leash because our pups are obviously trained to be off leash um that's really not something that we'll probably ever do just because it's so complex and you really do need to be like one-on-one -on -one in person with the trainer um to teach that um but i mean some tips to kind of start out young because that's not going to be like a training program that you're going to be able to immediately put them in um we allowed ours to be off the leash pretty much from the get-go um and we set boundaries so like we would go out in the front yard especially with enzo um he was always really good about it but like as soon as he kind of approached the the line that we didn't want him to cross we would you know establish that boundary and let him know hey no you're not going to go past that part you can be off leash as long as you follow you know the rules and boundaries but you know you have to make sure that you're safe about it also because I mean we obviously have cars come up and down the street 
so it's good to establish that in the beginning but to have them trained off leash the way that they are now with us that's something that you really do need to be trained on um the dogs will learn it really quickly it's really the humans that need the most training on how to do that properly um it's just so much more complex than just like one of us getting on a video and and talking about it and teaching it to you so um start them young set the boundaries when they're young um and then that way when you get to training it's not such a foreign concept to them um I feel like we tend to see like when people put them on the leash from the get-go it's harder like they want to be off leash even more well, you know yeah, what I mean and then like freedom. yeah and then you let them off the leash and they're like off the chain because they never have any freedom so we always kind of gave ours um, freedom from the get-go you know within reason and safety I guess Enzo is gonna just be right in front of me can you even see me You look sleepy. Bubba, I think you need to take a nap. Oh, they're saying Echo is back. Echo's back? Yep. It says, it, Riley said it was just when I started to talk louder. So maybe I'll talk quieter. <laughs> Issue then, or something, I'm not sure. Okay. Because there shouldn't be anything else that can pick it up. Okay. I'll talk a little bit lower. Keep on letting me know if you hear the echo so we can kind of keep on working on it. Like I said, we we're having some technical issues today. In addition to that, we also have a second camera running, but I feel like that should not be picking up any other kind of weird sounds. So just keep letting me know, and Will will keep working on it kind of while we're talking. Um, Michael asked the biggest difference between having two German Shepherds compared to one. Um, I feel like Enzo, like his personality completely changed when we got Lotus, which we loved. Like he uh, was so much more outgoing. He absolutely loved having like a companion to play with. So we always recommend either if you're going to get one, get the second one while the first one is still super young or wait until the second one is around two years so we waited until enzo was about two years old to get lotus um just because they're kind of mostly past like the teenage stage and um you know if you've worked on training then they're pretty much through training at that point in time so um i mean there's the biggest difference is just that enzo really got happier i feel like when we got lotus um, obviously cost is going to be something that gets factored into that. So you're pretty much doubling, um, anything cost wise, um, vet bills are doubled. The dog food bill is doubled. Um, I really don't know what our chewy bill is up to on a monthly basis. Now I'm sure will probably knows more on that than I do. Um, but it's not pretty. So cost wise, it is going to cost a lot more. Um, but as far as like, our lives changing i don't feel like it like changed a huge amount for for us i mean in the beginning when you go through the puppy stage it is a lot harder but um other than that i always would recommend two or say that two is better than one um enzo's a lot happier with the second one i think now if we got a third one i'm not enzo would be perfectly fine lotus would not be a happy camper i don't feel like um yeah i've actually heard i we've gotten a lot of and i don't know if will has seen them or it's just kind of me seeing them but um we've i've had a lot of people tell me lately that their dogs died from parvo um it's a very serious thing which is why we always say that yeah it's great to socialize them um but you need to wait until they're completely up to date on their 16 week shots to do that and we always recommend like as soon as you get them from that should have fixed the audio okay will is saying that whatever he just now did should have fixed the audio so let me know riley or nick or somebody else let me know if that fixed it um back to the parvo um 
it is usually deadly if they get it. So we always recommend like as soon as you get them from the breeder next day to the vet um, to make sure everything looks good, to make sure they are actually up to date on their shots. Um, I remember with Lotus, the paperwork that we had from the breeder wasn't up to like the standard that the vet wanted and she wound up actually giving Lotus like a brand new round of shots just to be sure. Um, so, you know, it is a very serious thing. It's very scary and most of the time it is deadly if it's not caught. Um, it's extremely hard when they're that little for them to kind of get through that. So, yeah, that's, Parva is a tough thing. Can you scroll down and see if there's if they're saying the audio yeah, is they good? Said it's good? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Sorry guys. There was actually three mics running. I didn't realize the computer mic was on. Oh. So <laughs> Yep. You learn every day. Um so let's see. Any enrichment games that you guys do? Um we don't do like as far like we do recommend like there's brain games that you can get for them like off of amazon they have like brain toys and whatnot we don't really use any of those types of things with ours because ours are so worn out anyway um one they go to the park typically or have some sort of exercise twice a day and then in addition to that like will is out and about he takes them with them they're getting that mental stimulation so we don't really do any kind of brain games with them however we do do hide and seek with them or we call it the find game um if you watched a few it's probably been like gosh 20 videos back at this point when we did hide and seek at lowe's um yeah. but we call it the find game and one of us will hide um did that pique your interest, Lotus? Did that pique your interest? Um, where we'll have them come and find one of us. Or we've even done it with like toys in the yard. We did it one day when it was yeah, still warm I out. I need to find that footage. I don't think I yeah, ever used that. Yeah, I was going to say, we never did put that in a video. Yeah, but we were like hiding their favorite toys in like the bushes outside and like in the mulch and um, in the flowers and stuff like that. And they are so wiped out from the mental stimulation more than they ever are from just like physical exercise. So um, that's a good like enrichment game to do if you can teach them how to do it. Start it from a really young age. We actually started kind of late with Enzo, yeah. but because we had already done it with Enzo when we got Lotus, we just like immediately started implementing it. So that's a really good thing to do. Um, we do give our supplements. You, we don't recommend, and I feel like if you ask your vet, they're going to tell you the same thing. We don't recommend giving them to them before they're six months old, but we give ours Dasequin, which is a joint supplement. And then we also do fish oil in uh, two of their meals each day. I think it's like two squirts, which is like two tables. Four squirts. Four each squirts all together. So it's like we do two squirts in the morning, two squirts at dinner, and it's like two tablespoons is what it equals. Um... The Dasequin is specifically like a joint supplement. The fish oil, in addition to being a joint supplement, it also does really good other things for their immune system, their coat, their skin, um, stuff like that. So those are the two supplements that we use. They're linked in every video. Um, so yeah, we definitely recommend that, but not before six months of age. And so Dewey says that he hopes that you feel better, buddy. He's sleeping now, so it's what he needs to do. Oh, Bonnie, that's cool. So she says her German Shepherd is um, 10 months old, and when she says take a nap, he goes into his crate. That's cute. We do not raw feed. We get asked that probably every live feed that we do, and I would say probably once a day I answer that question just like on a regular comment. We don't raw feed. We've heard really good things about it. It's just not something that we've implemented. Um, it's something that we'll probably research at some point in time. Um, and check into but we do not raw feed ours but I, I do hear really amazing things about it Enzo is not currently on any pain meds Sandra um I did give him we had some like leftover pain medicine that I gave him uh yesterday but like we don't have like a prescription for it or anything and that was the last one that I had and that was from like a previous injury um so he's not on any pain medicine right now he doesn't it doesn't really seem like he's in pain um, unless you touch it and then he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't like that at all. Like he will cry if you touch it. So I'm sure it is painful. Um, but he's putting pressure on it and walking on it. So that makes me feel a little bit better about it. If he would start to limp or show any signs of discomfort, I would call the it vet. basically just like skinned it. 
yeah and i told them the that it like they it. cut the little piece off yeah. yeah it mostly like the only reason why it's wrapped is because well one we don't want any dirt to get in there um but m mostly it's bleeding still and we don't want the blood like on any of our carpets or um and their beds or anything well, it's just like, like that wound. like it's not bleeding but yeah 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 he blood stained the old beds yeah, we have the old beds up here still. We did get them new beds. We have the new Casper beds, but we also had the old beds up here still yesterday. And I came home and there was like some blood all over it. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's not going to work. We're going to need to to wrap they it. They like them since you're talking about it. Do you hear me? What? Somebody asked if we like the, if they like the beds. So oh, yes. Yeah, it. the beds are nice. We love them. Um, they're bigger than I thought that they were going to be. We could have probably gotten the medium for a Lotus, but the only issue with that is then I feel like Lotus would be like, oh, let me lay on the big bed. And then Enzo would have to lay on the medium and that just doesn't make sense. So we got the two larges. You can see them in the camera. Like they're really, really big, way bigger than I thought they were going to be. Um, Enzo's bed used to go next to like right next to where I sleep. And that one doesn't actually fit there. So he's still adjusting to having his bed at the bottom of the bed versus on the side of the bed where I sleep. So he's lost a little bit of sleep lately, but he'll adjust. Yes, Jackson. I, this weekend, because I've had so many men ask about the merchandise. Like they want, men want to also wear the merchandise, but most of what we have on there is like kind of girly. Um, so... <laughs> Lotus is licking his arm. It's ridiculous. Lotus. Lo. He's off the chain. Um, but yes, this weekend I'm going to try to sit down and make uh, bully versions of merchandise. Well, I've so, got one. one. Yeah, but it's not like, you know how it says like German Shepherd Mama? Like uh, I have my German Shepherd Mama one on. Um, they want like men. Related one, so I don't know, German Shepherd Papa or you think German Shepherd Dad? Uh, Probably German Shepherd Dad. Yeah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Hi, Lucy. I see that you're all the way in Holland. Thanks for visiting us. And your German Shepherd Marley. Um, Isabel asked, have we ever had a different breed before German Shepherd or has it always been German Shepherd? So we both had family dogs um, before this. Mine was like a, I feel like it was like a, a lab chow mix. Um, and then what's Obi? Uh, he's more collie. And then but Will's. But he's a rescue, so he may not be pure. Yeah, so Will's family dog was a border collie. So we have had dogs in the past, but like not our actual own dogs. Watch out, big boy. Um, German Shepherds have been the only thing that we've owned. Um, really, Lotus. Lotus, come back over here. On come our on. own. It might get loud for a minute because Lotus is hitting Lotus. the mic. Lotus, This is what bed. real life is like, though. Get back on the bed. <laughs> and if you watched the last video lay and down. you saw the bloopers, All right, now. that's go every on. day. Go lay down. Go on. Go on. Go on. You can do it. Come on. Come on. Come I feel on. like I'm really behind on, Come on. comments. Come on. You can do it. Thanks, Eric. Lay down. Because I'm just now getting to the ones that say audio is all good now. Oh. <laughs> and people are like, yay, it's perfect. It's fixed. So that's good. Um, we have someone that asked about entering into the giveaway. So for the merchandise giveaway, Will does a video once a week and he'll tell you to put a certain hashtag in there. So this week I think it was hashtag Lotus. Yeah. And that was in like two videos ago. Yeah, I think in the comments I said last night, but it was two days ago or two videos ago. Yeah. So he'll tell you what hashtag to put on that specific video. Um, so make sure it goes on that one because we've had people that will hashtag Lotus like on last night's video. And it's like that's not where we're going to pull it from. So make sure that you are putting it on the uh, correct video. And then I had someone like, I got a DM and Instagram that said hashtag Lotus. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. It has to be on the video. Yeah. Um, so that's how you enter for the drawings. Oh, I finally got to Ella's comment that said, how are they liking their new beds? They love them.
Um, you Do can you answer the one about yeah. how we always say Lotus is more of the normal personality. They want to know if that includes the reactiveness and or anxiety. Yeah, sort of. so yeah. I feel like from... It's not uncommon. It's definitely not uncommon. It's not as uncommon as I thought that it was. Like when we got him and like really started diving into the reactiveness, like I thought like, wow, this is, you know, I've never seen this before. You know, this can't be that common, but the more people that we talk to and the more that we've gotten his story out there and even with our own trainer, um, he has told us that that is a very normal personality for German Shepherds specifically. You know, on the flip side of that, we talk to a ton of people that their German Shepherd has the same personality as Enzo, which is really the exception. Um, so I think it kind of depends. It's, it's not uncommon though. The reactiveness, I think, is a little less common, but the anxiety is definitely more common. So that is just like, because we get people at the time that are like, why are they, like, they're constantly vocal. That's yeah, a German that's Shepherd. Normal. Like, that is a completely normal personality trait for them. And I think anxiety is kind of the same way. They're just more of a very high anxiety breed. Um, and I just think that's kind of in their nature. They're constantly wanting to protect and work. Um and do and, and they're constantly like Enzo is always on alert. So I, I think that Lotus's personality is a little more like a regular German Shepherd, but his is in, in more intense in some ways too. The anxiety, because I know lots of you were asking about the CBD oil. I definitely were on like what week two and a half, three now. At least. I think like a, I mean we're I think well, we're close to week we're three. We're two weeks into February and we started that in January. Yeah. Um, I do think that the CBD oil is working for sure. Um, now that we've had it in his system, like I feel like it continues to get better and better and better. So I definitely think that that's working. Something that I highly suggest, like if you're struggling with similar anxiety issues to how he is, then that is something. But it, I will say, like I don't think that it makes a difference in his reactiveness. Who Lotus is? Yeah. No. So, and I didn't, I wasn't sure that it would. I mean, I was I'm always hopeful that, you know, that something will help that be better. Um, but mostly it's just help with like his anxiety while he's in the house. Yeah. Now I he's think. at times less reactive in the house to things that he shouldn't be reactive to. Yeah. But things that he's going to react to, that's pretty he's much. He's going to do it regardless, it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He did a little bit better on last night while watching the video. Yeah, so when we screen our videos at night before we put them up, he is insanely reactive. Like, it's really hard for Will and I to even just watch one of our own videos. Like, I'm like, you know that's you on the TV, right? Um, but he doesn't care. It's a dog on there, and he is extremely reactive. And he actually did do really well last night, and I don't know if he was he just, was really just, tired yeah. to begin with. And when he's tired... he shouldn't have been that tired, but... When yeah. he's tired, I think his reactiveness does seem to kind of be a little bit less... Um, but he did do way better last night than he normally does. And yeah. I think we're going to show a video at some point in time of what it's like for Will and I to sit down and watch one of our own videos. Because it's not usually fun for us. Yeah. All right. Are you giving me questions now or do I need to um, keep going? Because like I was doing I that just wanted to answer were... a couple questions oh, about the, okay, um, the giveaway. I know you already said when we do it. Um, but yeah. And Riley kind of already answered this, but I will repeat it once. We're actually going to draw twice today because yeah. last week's winner never got in touch with us. Uh, how you get in touch with us is just DM us on Instagram or Facebook because we need your address, obviously, and you don't want to post that in a comment. If you don't have Instagram or Facebook, I hear they are free to sign up. Uh, let's see. Alessandra and Andrea asked, how many hours do they sleep during the night? They basically sleep for as long as we sleep. Will gets up really early in the morning around 4 a.m. Um, and we go to bed. I mean, TV's usually off by 9.30 or 10. Yeah. At 10 at the very latest, but we try for like that between 9 and 9.30. So, I mean, they're sleeping from 9.30 until 4. Enzo, a lot of the time, because I don't have to get up until around 6.30, a lot of the time Enzo will stay in the bedroom with mm -hmm. me. Um and sleep in there until Will either comes in and says, hey buddy, like, come on, we're gonna go out and eat and stuff like that. 
um, or in, until I get out of bed. But Lotus, I He'll would say, almost always goes back to sleep. comes out with Will at 4 a.m., but then he just goes back to sleep out here. Yeah. I think he's afraid he's going to miss out on something. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, they sleep for a decent amount of time. Yeah. But like, it's even, not like deep sleep. But. No, but even on the weekends, like this morning, Will, Will and them, they still got up at 4 o'clock in the morning. So... If we tried to sleep in until like 9 a.m. That would never happen. It won't happen. So but Once we got to like a little after 7. And I think we went to bed. It was probably close to midnight. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Gina says, what comb do you guys use to brush the pups? Um, it's really not a brush. It's a shedding tool. And it's called the Ferminator. That's linked and everything, right? Yeah. The oh, Ferminator. Right. Like below. I call it Ferminator I, brush. It's really not a brush. It's a sh de shedding tool. But that's what we use on them, and it should be linked below. We should use it more. Yeah, we really should. We tell people to do all of these things, and then, like. That's really we, the one that we slack on the most. <laughs> we don't follow through with some of it. Like, I that's, was. That's really the biggest one we don't. It most, is the, the brush. Most everything else we do. Because that's why our. Like, it's they such shed. A like an insane amount but it's like if will or i would just have time to sit down for 10 minutes every night and brush them the shedding wouldn't be nearly as bad as it actually is right now and that's what we tell people to do to eliminate the shedding but we don't do it so yeah lynette thank you and so lynette says she hopes you feel better um we can't do an ipad cover because teespring doesn't have one um because everything we use is teespring so I was asking about the merchandise. They don't have these. Mm -mm. Oh. They don't have iPad covers. So if they if Teespring has one, then we can do one. They just don't have them right now. Yeah. So we're kind of limited with that. Uh, let's see. Dewey asked, do you guys put any balm or oil on their paws? Um, we I do have some to put on their paws. They don't always let me put it on there, but like if I notice, especially in the summer, that like they're super, super dry, I'll try to like once they lay down for the night, I'll try to get in there and put some of that on. I don't know what brand that is though. It's in the cabinet in there. I can always go grab it. Did you buy that online? I thought you bought that local for some reason. No, I bought it online. I think I got it off Amazon. Okay. Will's gonna go check. All right, I'm going to go check, I guess. Riley says, yes, I want Dog Dad merch. <laughs> I know, I can't believe how many guys that I've had ask about the merch. Um, someone asked, does Enzo dominate Lotus? Oh, there's the Paul stuff that we use. I can link it. Yeah, yeah. I'll have Will link it. Um, where was I? Does Enzo dominate Lotus or are they like, what would you say, babe? I would say Lotus tries to, and Enzo lets him go away for a little while, and then Enzo puts him in his place. Yeah, Enzo is so, like, kind. Like, he's so gentle. So, like, he'll let, and not even just, like, Lotus, even Charlie, I feel like, or other dogs, like, he'll let them get away with a lot. But, like, once they cross a line, he will put them in their place because he's mostly bigger than any other dog that we meet. So, yeah, I would agree with that. <laughs> Stephanie, you're brave. She says she's watching the video while giving her terriers a bath. Wow. I can't do anything while I'm giving either of them a bath. Like, that is the only thing that I can focus on. It's a hot mess. Yeah, Riley's right. He said, he answered the question where about Enzo dominating, and he said Enzo lets Lotus walk all over him. He does. They he, Lotus gets away with a lot. Uh, let's see. Bianca, I should have already answered your question, hopefully, because I'm a little bit behind on questions. Um, yes, the CBD oil is working. Um, somebody asked about sticker prints. Those we are going to do. Teespring doesn't do them, but I'm just going to do those. Um, but it's probably going to be a little while, to be honest. Um, Jeremy said, did you guys start e-collar training immediately when you got the pups? No, you are not allowed to start e-collar training until they're six months of age. Technically, I think it can be five and a half months. Our training company let us do e-collar training with Lotus at five and a half months. Um, but I think the, the general rule of thumb with any company that does e-collar training is going to be around that six month mark. Um, do you want to do the giveaways? Oh, yeah, we can do the giveaways. 
Do you still have the website pulled up? I don't know. Probably not, no. Hang tight while we do the giveaways. Um, I don't actually, maybe hold on a second then I'll pull it back up. Well, I thought you had it up. No, why would I keep that on my iPad? I take I this know. to work with me. I don't know, answer another question. I don't have one. Oh, and there went the arch nemesis, <laughs> the mailman. <laughs> okay, okay. The thank you, thank you. Come back over and lay down. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be so loud. <laughs> Enzo, it's okay. Come on. Thank you. It's okay. So if anyone was wearing headphones, you're probably deaf now. And I do apologize for that. We should really do the live streams after we know that the mailman comes because I feel like we ran into the same problem last week. It's since we started doing them at noon. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Bianca, no, we have not tried using the prong collar with Lotus. Um, we have had other viewers suggest that. Um, we just, the e-collar is fairly effective for him. Uh, it's really effective for Enzo, but it's pretty effective for Lotus. He recalls very, very quickly. He doesn't actually like the stimulation, so he listens very well when he has the e-collar on. So we have not tried the prong collar, but we've heard other people suggest it. All right, it's all in there, just don't hit yet. Okay, so this is gonna be the one for this actual week? Yeah. Okay, from yeah. two nights ago's video? Right. Okay. So I don't know if you wanna maybe like turn it around or something. Okay, what am I, I'm gonna hit the start button when I do yeah, turn it around? But you, yeah. Mm. No. Uh, hit good YouTube comments first. See up there, y'all. Can they see? I don't think they can see. Thirty-nine comments. Okay, go ahead and hit start. start. Yep. Christina. Christina Williams. So that's who won Is from this week's. That's week. who won from this week's. But now I got to do next week's. Yeah. Or last week. Sorry. Yeah. So I've got it saved in here. And that one's gonna say hashtag Enzo, right? Yeah. Okay. This one is gonna be the one from, that we did last week that- um, Two weeks ago or whatever. Yeah, the person never contacted us. Hunter Wood. I think that's one of our is Patreons. Is that one of our Patreons? Yeah, I think is so. Is her last name Wood? I think so. I know her first name is Hunter. Yeah. Yeah, so. that might actually be one of our Patreons. Um, so Hunter Wood is getting it from the one that we, the drawing we did last with Sunday. Enzo's. Yeah, with Enzo's hashtag. And then... Christina Williams. Williams. Christina Williams for this previous one that we just did for Lotus. Hashtag Lotus. So just DM, DM yeah. us on Instagram. Instagram. Get a hold of me on there. I look at those literally 5 million times a day. Did Lotus take them um, back? Yeah. Lotus took Enzo's spot, so Enzo's not happy right now. Come here, buddy. Okay. How do I get back to my screen here? Just It's still open in the background. Oh. I don't see it. Oh, whoops, it's not open then. Yeah. All right. Enzo, why don't you come over here and lay down, buddy? Come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Yeah. All right, I'm just scrolling back up to see if I missed anything. Because Will X'd out of the one that I was in, so I had my spot saved, and now I don't anymore. Lay down. Alyssa, I see that you said at 12.31, hey, I just got here. Can I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Drew, Lotus is actually really calm, but it's because he's super tired right now. I mean, he's generally calm if there's nothing to cause him to not be calm. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm back to kind of where I was. So, let me see here. Yeah, because there's the prong collar question. 
<laughs> Somebody almost knocked their TV over a while. Yeah, that's Jeff. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, our Patreon Jeff. He has a German Shepherd whose name is Fritz. And apparently they were watching one of our videos the other night and Fritz almost knocked the TV over. Um, we haven't really been using the Thunder shirt. No, we took, we took the Thunder shirt back. I didn't notice oh, yeah. enough. Remember, I took it back a few weeks ago. Really? really, Enzo. Enzo just hit the mic, so it's gonna be loud. I'm so unhappy. Um, I took it back Here. a couple weeks ago. I just didn't notice enough of a difference. Um, it wasn't, I don't know if it just didn't fit well or if he didn't like it, I don't know. But it seemed to almost cause him more anxiety, so we took it back. Yeah, Enzo, so KJ, I'm seeing your comment that said this is a bit silly, but is Enzo really not a cuddler? Um, he really isn't a cuddler. He... Unless he wants to be. Yeah, unless he really wants to be. Now, if he wants to get in bed and cuddle, he was going to get in the bed and cuddle, whether you want him to or not. Um, but he really doesn't require, like, cuddling, where Lotus wants to cuddle every single moment that he can. He has that water down. That's what he's doing. Will's going to get wa in water for Enzo. He's upset that he doesn't have any in there because we washed the bowl this morning. <laughs> Drew, that's funny. Somebody comments that Enzo is what he eats, a gentle giant. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Riley. I knew, I knew if someone was wearing headphones, like that was going to be the end of it. So yeah, I'm sure you're deaf now. Sorry. Um, Bonnie, we don't have a Twitter for the pups. Um, I don't, I don't think Will or I have a Twitter, so, which is probably why we didn't create a Twitter for them. They do not have a Twitter. They have Facebook and Instagram. Um, Instagram is you, it was, their Instagram was started a long time ago. So like that one is built up a lot more than the Facebook um, page that they have. Facebook page that they have was something that is somewhat recent. Um, and so that one's not as big. So Facebook or Instagram, no Twitter. What is the best brand of harness? I'm going to be honest. We have yet to really find like an amazing harness that we love. I did just buy them two new harnesses. Um, so that when we take them to Lowe's and out in public and stuff, um, they can both have like matching ones and then lotus has patches on his that says nervous dog and enzo has patches on his that say um support support vehicle. yeah support you like that he's emotional support for lotus um so i just bought those but they haven't really worn them enough for me to be able to like be like oh yeah these are really good to recommend them but if we wind up liking them it's definitely something that we'll link in the videos i don't like linking things and like giving recommendations for things that we don't actually use on a daily basis or that we don't actually recommend um so i'll once we try it out a little bit i'll keep you guys up to date on that uh camera two is going to cut for just a second what? Camera two is going to cut off for just a second. Oh, okay. Will says the second camera is going to cut off for a second. Enzo and Lotus, they play fight. They don't, like, usually ever get too crazy aggressive. If they do, um, we just basically put them in a timeout. So Enzo never gets overly aggressive, but sometimes Lotus, um, he, like, it just... He just gets to a certain point and he just gets overly what he really should be. Um, and we'll just give them the command to like come to us and make them sit and just say time out and like maybe 30 seconds. And then we break them and let them go play again. Um, but it's really that's not something that even happens like on a daily or weekly basis. It's really every once in a while. Somebody wants to know where is Rally today? Sandra wants to know where she is. She's probably asleep. Yeah, she's a lazy cat. She sleeps pretty much all day. She's nocturnal. Oh, thank you. So Carnus Fam says that they just signed up as a Patreon. Oh, I've got and a couple Patreon. I know we got this. yeah, we got like two more. What was it yesterday? Yeah, I think we're up to six now. Yeah, so we're up to like six or seven Patreons now. So thank you guys for supporting the channel in that way. 
you should be able to see Enzo and Lotus now. Will has the camera, the second camera in his up? hand. Yeah, yeah I, but they want to see Lotus. Oh, he's... He's well, just, it's a little delayed. I've been showing him both. Yeah. Let's see. So someone says, in regards to the harnessing gear, you should check out K9 Tactical Gear. They're on Instagram. They have super high quality products and they never disappoint. We'll look into it, Jackson, right? Thank you. Hey Drew, so Enzo has a bandage on his right paw. We kind of talked about this earlier, so you probably weren't in here, but he got, his paw got cut yesterday, yesterday morning at the park. Um, he had to go to the vet and get like part of it, um, like snipped off almost and got it cleaned really well. So we just have a bandage on it right now because we don't want it to bleed on their beds and the carpet and whatnot. Oh, Riley took care of it. <laughs> All right, guys, I think I'm up to date on questions. So I'm just kind of, and we already did the drawing. So any questions, concerns, comments, anything that you guys want to talk about, we're about 10 minutes from being on here for an hour, I guess really a little bit more because we were delayed a little bit. Um, but yeah, so we're only on here for you guys and what you guys need and want to hear. So if you have something still, stick it in the chat. If not, then we'll wrap up for today. This would be a pretty quick one for us. It usually takes uh, us about an hour. If you want to do a merch plug, it's 10% off this weekend for Valentine's Day. What is it? 10% off. For what? Merch. It's like if they get it through ours or just yeah, in general? Yeah, there's, there's a code. Will says there's a code on the merch website. So Teespring, which is where you see like art. It should be pinned, I guess. Yeah. And what do they need to do? Um, they get 10% off if they use the code. I think it's, uh, He's I put it in the notes, but it's not there anymore now or something. Uh, Apparently there's a code on Teespring that you can use to get 10% off our merchandise. This weekend. This weekend only though, Will is saying. So look into that. He said he put the code in there, but it's not on there anymore. So I'm not sure. Um, let's see. We do not brush, Alyssa, we do not brush the boys' teeth. That's a good question. Um, we give them antlers, deer antlers that you can buy like at your local pet store. They're kind of pricey, I'm not going to lie, but totally worth it. And we let them chew on them for an hour or so, just like here and there. Um, not like every night we don't give it to them, but once or twice a week maybe. And their teeth are cleaner than like my teeth like it's insane what the deer antler gets off of their teeth um so that's actually what we use and we that's what we actually recommend for teeth brushing is deer antlers it has to be monitored though you don't just want to give it to them and just let them chill i put the code in the notes it's love sick okay so will says he puts the code put the code in the notes for you guys for 10 percent off of the merchandise this weekend only Yeah, so someone asked, any good teething advice for puppies getting bitey? We get that question all the time. Um, so two things, basically, that you're going to need to do. One huge thing is you need to carry around and have in every room teething toys. So then when they're biting on furniture, or biting on a shoe, or biting on their bed, you can immediately replace that behavior with a teething toy. Um, if they're biting on a person or you or like your pants or your shirt, you obviously don't want them to do that. You need to react like one of their siblings would react. So we usually tell people to just yelp really loud or say ouch in a really high pitched voice. Um, and that's such a negative kind of reinforcement for them that over time it really does start to work. In addition to that, um, as they get older, that's going to be a phase that they get out of. Um, so just stay consistent with it. Have lots of toys for them to chew on, lots of options of toys for them to chew on. And just make sure that you're letting them know that that's socially not an acceptable behavior. Uh, let's see. I guess somebody asked about why we don't get larger dogs or maybe rescues i don't i didn't see the original question but riley oh got did it. riley take care of it yeah it's because of riley um so my hoodie jessica asked what do your hoodie say mine says and i have enzo hair all over them um german shepherd mama and then will says eat sleep pup repeat 
and those are both available on the merchandise site. Um, on the back of mine and Will's, we have Enzo and Lotus's name on that. Um, yeah, you might be able to see Will's a little bit better. Really, Lotus? Um, but the their names are not actually on the back of all of them. That's something that we just did because we wanted them back on up. there. But we did a poll on it to see if you if that's something that you guys would want. And most people said that they would not want Enzo and Lotus's name on there. That they would just want them plain. So we've just left them plain. Um, but the people who win the t-shirts and the drawings, if you guys want their names on them, just let me know. I can always add it on there. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we have used a beef bone for teeth brushing, and Joe loves that especially. Susie, I cannot see your question. Let's see. Oh, Lotus Surgery. I don't know. I don't really understand that question. I think that's probably why I skipped it. What? Where is it? Lotus Surgery. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean... He hasn't had surgery. I mean, he got fixed, but... Yeah, I mean, he's been neutered, but... Other than that, I, I'm not sure what you mean by that. I think that's probably why I skipped it. So if you want to clarify, I'm um, more than happy to to come back to you and answer that. Yeah, Calvin, we've kind of went back and forth with the raw food diet, just not something that we're currently doing. We hear really amazing things about it, though. Um, Enzo's big on plain tug. Lotus, meh. Yeah, Enzo loves Tug. Lotus, not so much. They say that the more confident the dog is, that the more they will love to play Tug, which makes complete sense to me because Enzo is very confident and he will play Tug all day, every day. He loves it. Lotus will not really engage in Tug, and that makes sense because he's reactive. He's very anxious, so that tells me his confidence is probably not as high. Um, Sandra, Enzo was born in June and Lotus was born in June. Um... That was not done purposefully, but Enzo was born June 4th and Lotus was born June 24th. So they're like two, Enzo's three and a half, Lotus is one and a half. So they're almost exactly two years apart. Yeah. That was done purposefully, the two year mark. Uh, let's see. Anything that you see in there, babe? Um, no, I mean, I've been messing with the pups so much, I'm not. I'm so, sure. Diana, if you don't mind, just because I got knocked out of the our little chat thing when Will switched over, I probably just missed the question. Um, if you can post that question again for me so that it comes in at the bottom, I'll get to it in just a second. I'm sorry that I missed it. It's been kind of hectic here today, if you can't tell. Will's been up and down about 50 times. The dogs have not been settled. Um, yeah. Oh, and then Riley just told her to repeat it. <laughs> yeah, Calvin, Will has had a border collie. We have not had a border collie together, though. Some, oh, yeah, somebody did ask about that. Yeah, I mean, we're not border collie. We don't know much about... I mean, we had. I had one, but my parents have one. Really, I mean, they're just high energy, like shepherds. Mm -hmm. But I would Obi's assume, not really I would high assume, energy, though. He was. I mean, Obi's getting older, though. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they're just high energy. Yeah. Um, Kendall, so she was the one that asked about the biting situation, she says, and I have tried to replace it with the toy, but he just gets more frustrated and starts nipping at my face. Um, I would just do like short timeouts for that. So if he's crate trained or you have a crate in the house, I would just put him in his crate for, I don't know, maybe a minute or two, let him out. Um, that seems to over time, like once you, if you're very consistent about that, they will very quickly learn that, oh, I'm getting put in here because of my actions. Um, and so that's kind of, if we ever ran anything, it, but it's a very short timeout. It's not really a punishment. Um, it's just, hey, you need to chill out for a second. What you're doing is not socially acceptable. Get in here. And they tend to pick up on that. So if you have the option to do that, I would try that. We did the same with Lotus before training. We would just make him, I would make him sit down and just kind of hold him for five or 10 seconds. Yeah. And then let him go. And if he did it again, I just yep. immediately went and got him, made yeah. him sit down for a second. It's just a little, literally just a timeout for a second. Yeah. Basically, it's, you don't get to keep doing what you want to do. I'm right. going to make you stop. Yeah. And he learns that, okay, if I keep doing that, he's going to make me keep stopping. Yeah. And it, it's very effective. Like if you're actually consistent with it, it, it was, it yeah. was very effective, especially with, with Lotus. Um, let's see here. Um, 
any good advice to get your dog to come to you? My dog goes in my backyard and then does not come back inside. Um, you can get low <laughs> to the ground and you can spread your arms out. Yeah. And call for them, obviously treats. Treats are a big one. If they have like a treat that they love, we use treats sometimes. Like they'll be out there barking at the deer and you're like, hey, like this, is, I'm not the, gonna sit here and yell. The biggest um, issue is if every time they come to you, you take them inside, or, then they learn that, okay, every time I go to them, I have to go inside. So I don't wanna go to them. Um, so I would have them come to you, give them a treat or something, then let them keep yeah. playing, release them again, let them keep playing. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, Diana's question back here. Okay, Diana, let me see. I have a one-year-old border collie who's a rescue and super That's hyper. Oh, it. so you already That's got to it. That's what I was just it. answering. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize that was the same person. Yeah. So. Hmm. That's tough. I just, Diana, let me know like how much exercise they're getting a day and if you're doing like any type of brain games or anything with them. Um, with high energy dogs like that, if they're consistently exercised, they tend to be a little less unbearable. Um, there's a husky that lives like not very far oh. from us and sometimes when we're like, I'll be driving to work in the morning and I'll see the lady walking the husky and the husky is literally jumping like next to her the entire time like he doesn't walk on the ground like he just jumps up and down the entire time all the way to the park um but then like if you see him coming back he's much calmer um and huskies their energy level is insanely high so i'm just wondering if they're um if the border collie is getting enough exercise or enough mental stimulation the other thing that i would recommend if they are getting that mental stimulation they are you believe that they are getting exercise we are huge advocates of obedience training that's gonna that will really kind of help um kind of mold them into not expressing their behavior their you know hyperness in that way and ultimately make you a little bit happier because if you're unhappy and it's unbearable for you then everybody and they kind of are going to feed off of that energy that you have going so i would say lots of exercise lots of mental stimulation and if you can obedience training is a big one um let's see gti nisha what about the beef bone for teeth brushing we don't do beef bones well sometimes we do I don't like them. We do them. it in the summer. Sometimes Will will bring them home in the summer. I'm not usually real happy about it. They're a hot mess. So we do it outside. Um, Which is why we do it outside, but it still gets like on their paws and stuff. I mean, ultimately you can. It's just the antler is, you can do it inside. You can do the antler outside. It's a lot, you don't have to clean anything up afterwards. Um, I don't have to worry about them like wanting to swallow any pieces of it if it comes off. Like the beef bones come apart. Mm -hmm. which then like Lotus is like, oh, let me go hide this little part in the yard. And then there's like five pieces hidden in yeah. the yard by the end of it. And, and then every time the they the go water. out to go potty, he's out there digging up part of a beef bone. Um, so you can see why I'm not like a huge fan of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, same concept ultimately. I just, I prefer the antlers, but that completely personal dis decision on my part. Um, let's see. Let's see, now that he got his bed, he's all passed out yeah diana if you i must have missed that part but she said she's afraid that the german shepherd might bite her yeah if you have another dog that is showing aggression towards the border collie make sure that you're keeping them we, separated i don't yeah because because we've actually had a couple of situations recently in the past where we've had people reach out and say hey my dogs aren't really getting along and i go through like the whole spiel of like keeping them completely separated for you know until you can get them socialized together and somehow like the dog still winds up attacking the other dog so if you feel like there is any kind of crazy tension there and that the german shepherd might actually attack the other dog um that's a very very serious situation and if you want to where i can elaborate a little bit more on that reach out to me on instagram um and i can have a conversation with you so if you just get on their instagram page i'll get that message um, because that's actually a very serious situation and we've had way too many not good stories about that lately. Have you or Will ever gone on a road trip, maybe out of state? We yeah, get that we get that every, that every week. Um, just with Enzo, we went to Tennessee one time to a friend's house who also had pups. Um, and we were just there for like a day. We have not done any road trips with both of them together. 
let's see so Susie Lotus and Enzo both were I think what you mean there is cryptorpic which is where only one of their testicles falls down and the other one stays up apparently that's like a common thing in german shepherds both of ours were cryptorpic and i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly um but i know it starts with like crypt um enzo's actually fell like right before his neutering surgery happened and they were able to do his completely normal we did not have such a great experience with lotuses lotuses stayed up in his abdomen and he was actually cut open three times for them to find it. The first time, like they just cut him open normal to the, do the normal neutering part. And then she thought that she had found the one that was still up in his abdomen. Apparently that was just like a fat deposit. So she cut him there, so that was two cuts. And then she actually did wind up finding it, which was a third cut. So his neutering experience was like the worst. Yeah. I mean, and it he was- had to be calm for- it was like 10 plus days. It was so bad. And I felt so bad for him. Like he was in so much pain. And yeah, I mean, keeping Enzo calm is one thing, but like keeping Lotus calm is a whole different, on a whole different level. Especially when he's that young. It was terrible. So yeah, both of them actually had that situation. I think it's a common thing for German Shepherds, but I don't know for sure. Uh, let's see. Um, polywog plants, how do you approach shedding? I know I'm starting to see signs of steel about to start as heavy shedding. And I was wondering if you brush Enzo and Lotus daily, especially when it gets really bad. We should brush them daily and that is what we actually recommend. Um, the Ferminator de-shedding tool is listed or linked below all the videos and linked in here. Um, if you get that and you just spend 10 minutes a day or like 15 minutes every other day, that will cut down so much on the shedding in the house, I promise you. Get that, get the brush. Oh, let's see. Uh, no, so Enzo and Lotus do not sleep in their crates at night. Um, they sleep up here in the bedroom with us. So they do not sleep in their crates at night. Their crates are in the garage. So they sleep up in the house with us. Um, and do you close the doors? I'm assuming you mean if they slept in their crate, do you close the doors? If they did... They'll sleep we... in them in the day if we're down there, though. Yeah, if, they're, if the boys are down there working in the garage, they'll get in them and just sleep in there. But no, we don't, like, lock them in there. Um, let's see. Yeah, Sandra. Yeah, we were doing YouTube videos then, I think, at that point in time when we went to pick up Lotus from his surgery. Mm -hmm. She said she's been watching ever since then. So, no, he has not, Susie, he has not had that surgery. That was, if that's the same thing that I'm talking about, they did that surgery when he was neutered. Let's see. Am I missing anything? Teething rings. Um... Somebody wanted to know why we got two males, which we've answered in videos, really. You just, yeah. just kind of happened. I just pick whatever my heart tells me that I want, and we ultimately wanted a female, but um, Lotus's picture just pulled out my heartstrings, so I got him. Um, let's see. Jessica says, hi, my dog obsessively barks at dogs when we are out for a walk. I've tried turning around, but he just carries on. What should I do? A um, couple of things that you can try. Um, the There is something out there, you can get it at PetSmart and probably even off of Amazon, I'm sure, called a gentle leader. And it's not necessarily meant to keep the dog from barking. However, we used it on Lotus for a brief time um, when he was kind of doing the same thing with his reactiveness. And for some reason, it has like a calming effect on them. And basically what it does is it goes around their nose, but like it's super, super thin. So it's not a muzzle at all. Um, and then it connects behind their ears. So when they're barking and they're, they're probably pulling when they're barking, it kind of tightens a little bit. Um, so for Lotus, it kind of had like a calming effect. So you could, could try that. And it's, I think, fairly cheap where you could 
you know, get it and return it. Not really a big deal if it doesn't work. Um, the other thing that I would suggest is obedience training. That's something that they, um, there are like special training programs out there that deal with that type of stuff, um, where that could be something where you went through obedience training and kind of worked on that specifically. So I would definitely recommend that. Uh, um, let's see what else we got. Waterfall asked some questions, but Riley answered Took them. Took care of them. Yeah. Okay. Do Enzo and Lotus do any tricks? We don't do trick training. Um, a lot of people do. We see really cool videos all the time. The anything training related that they know is to either benefit them or benefit us. Um, so we don't, I can't think of anything. I mean, even weird. a couple videos ago when I'm throwing the ball past them, that's not meant to be a trick. It's really just meant to be a distraction. Yeah. Because if they can ignore that, then they can ignore almost anything. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, we work with them on weird things like Will was saying. Um, if you watch that video, but like that's really to benefit them and to benefit us. So that's working on their distraction training by doing that. So it's not necessarily a trick. So yeah, we don't do trick training. Do you crate train when they are small? Yes. So Jasmine, Leon, very good question. We highly recommend crate training the day that you bring home. So if you get them at eight weeks, started at eight weeks, you might even get lucky and the breeder may have already started that process. Um, that's how Charlie was down the street. That's They had already had him crate trained before Rachel and Dave yeah. brought him home, which was amazing because then they didn't have to do it and he was already loved being in the crate. Um, but yes, day one, you're gonna start crate training and yes, they do need to sleep in there at night. That's the big thing. Um, you're gonna lose a lot of sleep for the first probably week and a half, two weeks. Um, until they adjust, but then after that, it'll your life will be so much easier when they're crate trained. Um, and especially like with potty training, as far as potty training is concerned, that also helps keep them from having accidents um, yeah. when they're confined to that area at nighttime. So yes, we do recommend it at night. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, Lotus slept in his, they sleep out now, but until he was at least probably Enzo, eight nine months at least probably Enzo, even over a year before we let lotus out yeah enzo was fairly old too i feel like enzo was probably six months or something like that before it was maybe even oh, longer we, we had the crates upstairs yeah we would just keep them in the bedroom to, like they're not still in our bedroom obviously but yeah i mean for like that first year there was a crate in our bedroom like that's yeah. just kind of the way it goes um it's a pain in the butt but that's just the way it works out kind of um Drew, yeah, we talk, <laughs> Will and I have that conversation all the time. We're like, yeah, our dogs listen better than most humans. Yeah, that I would say that's an accurate statement. Uh, let's see. Um, never used a martingale collar. Yeah, never heard of that, Nick. Again. There's a lot of things we haven't yeah. used. Yeah, martingale collar. I'll have to look that up. Sounds interesting. Oh, no. So the they do not sleep in their crate at night. I already answered that. But when, no, we don't close our bedroom door. Like, we don't lock them in our bedroom. No, they can no. go out and get water. They can come out and get a drink of water. They can come out and sleep in the living room if they yeah. want it to. They can go anywhere um, except for the, the one, my office, because Rally's food and stuff is in there. And yeah. that just gives her a safe space at night. Yeah, yeah. Is eight to 900 square feet enough? It is not, but we have two in it. Our, our house is about our house is about 900 square feet yeah uh it's small it's very small but we make it work with two of them we don't work it doesn't work it it could be better <laughs> well, let's see yeah you guys won't see it for uh, probably a week or so but when the bed showed up like they didn't even fit in the bedroom like we did like rearrange the bedroom it's going to be on a video where you guys get to see how much they don't fit in our house um, Antonio, how do you prevent your German Shepherd from jumping on anyone? Mine does it every time, even though she's playing. No harm, as she is super friendly with any dog and anyone. Yeah, and she's less than two years old. That's a tough one, and we actually still work on that with Lotus, and he's, you know, a year and a half, he's starting to approach that two-year mark. Um, we use the command off. Um, to get them to, well, Enzo doesn't, I wouldn't have to ever tell Enzo, but with Lotus, we use the command off, but that's also something that we used in the training that we went through with him. Um, that was actually one of the first things that we worked on with him when we saw Tim. Yeah, actually. Off because he would jump on us actually, like crazy. If memory serves. Was that his puppy consultation? If memory serves, off is not one they teach in the basic, mm -mm. Uh, but we 
Tim already knew we were going to do the advance. Yeah. And I think we worked on that one first, which isn't something they would normally no, do. They usually don't let you do that. But he also knew that we had been through it with Enzo, Enzo and stuff. Yeah. And it was super important because that was a huge issue. It with was Logan. a huge issue with him. But yeah, I mean, we use the command off. Um, if for someone who hasn't been through training, what I always tell them to do is like if, if someone is coming to your house and you kind of just need to explain ahead of time, like, hey, if the dog jumps on you, what you're going to want to do is turn your back. So we use that before we had the e-collar with Lotus um, is, you know, when I would come in the door, that was the first thing that he would do is jump on me. And I turned around and like you literally just cross your arms, turn your back. And then that typically will make them want to be like, what's going on? And like, and they'll sit down and kind of wait. And then you go to pet then at that point. But if they jump again, it's cross your arms, turn your back. Um, so that kind of keeps them or deters them from doing that. That's really the biggest, um, the biggest thing that I can recommend to do is almost just like planned ignoring. But again, you have to kind of explain that situation to whoever's coming into your house and just let them know to do that. But I feel like that technique has been pretty effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, why did you choose a breeder instead of a... Riley already answered Oh, that. okay. Yeah. Perfect. I do it for Riley. Yeah. Love when Riley and Nick are in here with us. Except sometimes we don't realize they already answered it. Yeah, and then we answer it anyway. <laughs> uh, let's yeah, see. We rarely use our crate either, which you already kind of talked about. Yeah. Susie says, my dog had bilateral surgery on Tuesday. It's so hard. Thank you for sharing. Surgery is tough. Like, it... Like... I feel like you're like, oh, okay, you know, like it'll like it'll be fine in like a week or whatever. Like it affects you more. Like when they have surgery and like they're down, especially with two of them, because like Enzo was fine when Lotus had his surgery. Like it is so tough. Like I feel like it disrupts the whole household. Like mm -hmm. everybody's stressed, everybody's anxious. You're like, oh my gosh, don't move. You know what I mean? Like don't bark, don't run at the door. Like I can totally empathize with you on that situation. The the whole surgery thing, it's rough. Um, it is not a good time at all. Um, that was a oh, he's still wearing the cone. Did we? <laughs> I don't know if we've ever showed it in videos. We have. So we have this amazing cone. cone that's really not a cone. It's like a donut. If you can imagine a donut, like a life preserver donut that goes like, you know, you would sit in in the pool. They make them to go like around their neck because the cone for ours, like it created so much more stress and anxiety for them that I ordered this thinking like, gosh, I really hope this works. And it is the most amazing thing. And because it's like a inflatable almost, and then it has like a real soft outside part, like they cool. almost just use it as a pillow. So I don't know if you, Susie, if you get a hold of me like in Instagram, I'll send you the link to that. I don't know if that's something find you're it, interested in or not. Computer, I mean, so. the pup might be healed by the time you can even get it to the house. Um, but ours hated the actual cones and the cones that the donut thing that we had for him worked so much better than it's I could not, ever I mean, imagine. Even with like Enzo's thing right now, Enzo's fine. He will ignore it. But if that happened to Lotus, he would have to up the cone. Yeah. Because he can't. He Yeah, he can't. Um, Bonnie just sent a super sticker, but she didn't leave a question. Oh, okay. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, there was a question. Now I lost it because she just Let's see. She said, oh. Oh. Um, Alyssa asked about the jumping. That has nothing to do with German Shepherds. That has to do with Enzo because he's so big. Why we don't like him to jump. Yeah, so they're super, super and prone. And when they're puppies because like the x-ray I showed you. Yeah, they're super, super prone to um, joint issues, like especially like elbow dysplasia, hip dysplasia. Um, we don't worry about it as much with Lotus, but because Enzo's so big, if he jumps up in the air to get a ball and comes down, that's 110 pounds coming down on his front arms or his back legs, depending on how he's coming down. Um, and their they their bones rub together. Um, so and their bones are not connected when they're no, pups. and especially when they're babies. We just saw an X-ray on was that Instagram? Yeah, I don't know where it showed it. How old was the pup? Uh, not very old. Just yeah, old. just like a baby. Like the pup was only like a few weeks old, but they did like a full body x-ray on him. And like you could see the gaps between all of their bones. Like because he just had so much more growing to do. Like it's insane how far away they are. So especially when they're pups, um, you don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize like those bones and the, the way that their joints are forming. You don't want to jeopardize that at all. Um, but with Enzo, um, 
we just like we really limit the jumping with Which him we did that after he almost had the surgery we had multiple consultations this wasn't yeah. something that this is not something that we just like oh okay this we came it after out. vets told us we need to chill out yeah he they would throw the ball all the time at the park because that's what it's loves to do and, stuff and, and he would jump up and come down jump up to come down and we were doing that over and over again and he actually has like the onset stages of elbow dysplasia in his right front arm which is like always the arm that he's struggled with anyway that's the arm that he had pano in um and so he's just very accident prone but yeah. so after that they told us he needed surgery and we went to specialist and got second opinions and everything else and that's really what started us on the joint supplements um so ultimately that's why we do mostly low impact exercise which is what we always recommend especially as puppies like hikes and stuff. hiking swimming walking but not any of those excessively either like you don't want to go on a five-hour hike every day um, yeah like you know within the limit but yeah jumping or jumping for a frisbee a ball um they like mental to, games yeah i mean they were again you haven't seen it yet but like the video where i'm training them in the garage because it was pouring down rain they were more exhausted after that than most any park trip the mental stimulation does it i mean it like it takes everything out of them so yeah, that's why we don't we don't allow the jumping. We don't recommend the jumping. Um, oh, Denise said that she the thing that Nick said about the Martingale collars. Mm -hmm. I guess she has them and loves them. I'm gonna have to look that up, guys. <laughs> Jackson says I'm in a 610 square foot with one. If it's not easy, but with enough exercise, yeah, it isn't a huge deal. It's all about like they will live in a box with you like as long as you get them out there and exercise them and take care of them and socialize them like they they just want to be with you so yeah i mean yeah. getting them out there and exercising is the biggest thing like as long as you're take care and taking care of their needs yeah i mean like i said our house is tiny we like, have we, almost 1,000 square feet here they are yeah <laughs> right next to us um let's see i said almost 1,000 like it was a good thing yeah um Alyssa, no you are not asking too many questions we're here for you guys so as long as you're here asking us questions that's what we're here for um we don't mind the questions at all trust me um what else we why got? is there x-rays i don't know bonnie asks i don't understand the question i will have mm -hmm. x-rays when over one year i don't I see. wouldn't I wouldn't get x-rays just for the fun of it. Um Bonnie might be the one that her pups had surgery. I can't remember. Uh oh. Yeah, I don't Bonnie, if you don't mind clarifying and letting us know what the x-rays are for. I can't I'm everything jumbles together after so many questions. Um, but I would not do x-rays for the fun of it. Um, because they have to, you know, go under with the anesthesia and the anesthesia that they use on pups is not like the highest quality anesthesia. Um, I always super worry when Enzo has to, um, have anything done to where he has to have anesthesia because he has to get extra dose of it because he's so heavy. Like after a certain weight limit, they have to give them extra. And so I feel like when we had his neutering done or something done or maybe it was his x-rays they had to actually have like a specialist there it was like a special person because of how much anesthesia that they had to give him and that lady couldn't be there that day like she had called in or something and we actually had to wind up rescheduling okay. so i always super because you gotta think once they're this big that's like human size anesthesia yeah it gets like it's it's super risky i don't like it and maybe it's just me but like it's I you don't like anything yeah I don't like anything to when I'm out of control basically when it comes to them as long as I'm in control I'm good um when it starts to get out of my control I'm not I don't do well with it uh Jeffrey asked if we would do an ASMR I have no idea what that is ASMR yeah no idea elaborate for us mm, let's see I'm not sure where you're at. I just kind of cherry I'm just kind of scrolling things. through. Someone said there are police dogs after a year. It's fine. They love to jump. Yeah, I mean, if you have one that's super in shape, super used to jumping, you don't have any joint issue fears, anything like that. Maybe you've been giving joint supplements. Absolutely. 
Um, Keep in mind that the police dogs aren't jumping over and over again every single day. Yeah, they um, just get trained how to do it. Yeah, they, they get they trained how around. to do it. They do agility training, things like that. They practice, um, you know, that type of stuff. But Enzo is not in the same shape as a police dog would be. So, yeah. like, police dogs, I have a friend that has a police dog, and they are very strict on diet. They're very strict on exercise. They're very strict on the supplements that they get to take care of their joints and stuff like that. Um, so, and they're also trained to do it the right way. Enzo jumping up in the air to get a frisbee or a ball, he's not trained to do that, so he might not come down the right way. A police dog, they're trained to do that. They're going to come down the correct way. Let's see. Do your water bowls contain water effectively? Our four-month-old puppy keeps flipping the dish and spilling water everywhere in search of a better bowl. Do you have the bowl in there? Yeah, it should be in there. I've so we have this videos. amazing bowl. Get it. It's on Amazon. But who said that? Let me see. No, I mean, if they're flipping um, the bowl, I mean, I mean they're four-month-old. That just yeah, kind of happens. Yeah, that kind of just the way it goes. But DTEX H3. Um, there should be a link for a bowl that we have that we bought off of Amazon. We actually tried a couple ones before we got to this one. It minimizes spills. Like a lot of them, they'll take a drink and then they'll walk away and all the water like just comes out. Um, this minimizes that and it has little rubber pieces on the bottom and it's wide and like square. Um, it, it, I would, would think it would be hard. really hard to tip over, even a four month old, like playing with the bowl. I feel like it would be really hard to tip this bowl over. Check out the link I put it to in the, the bowl. Too. Yeah, it's apparently in the notes. Or in the chat. Um, but. Yeah, get that bowl. It's awesome. Um, somebody <laughs> just has their sleeping beds, their Casper beds. Yeah, Casper. We just bought them. We love them. Let's see. I'm here, I'm Bonnie. I was just, she's just basically oh. talking. I was just reading. Do you recommend harnesses? It really just depends. Um, we only put harnesses on ours, like if we go out in public somewhere really. Um, if your dog pulls on the leash, it could help with the pulling. It, I won't guarantee that it'll help with the pulling, um, but just the way where it, it's around their whole body and the leash is typically attached to the back, it kind of, um, lets you have more control of them um but yeah we don't use ours a whole lot um somebody i lost it i think it was it's gone riley got that one about not starting the supplements until six months yeah and just check with your vet See. Andrea asked about having a meetup. I don't know. We keep getting that question more and more. We do get that question. We are getting that question more and more because I think, you know, people are noticing just from footage that they live in the same area that we do or close to the same area that we do. Um, we just are not sure how to handle that yet and how we want to go about that. Uh, especially with Lotus and him being reactive, like he probably wouldn't be able to to do something like that i don't know maybe yeah i mean i guess it's someone that knows his story and understands his story it actually might be something that could turn into something positive because they're going to understand that he's going to bark and growl at first but it would maybe allow him to get used to someone that's a stranger so i don't know it's something that we need to kind of get a game plan for because we are getting asked that question a lot more often yeah let's see Mm. we get this question a lot how do i stop my pup from chasing cars keep them on a leash um that's super super dangerous um the other thing is is you could do like obedience training with them like i've said a million times like we're huge advocates of that if you do obedience training with them if they start to run towards a car you can recall them and they'll come back to you um but yeah i mean Ours have never, like, just had the desire to chase a car. I don't know why. Um, I feel like that's more of, like, if you live in the country, it's a little bit more common. Um, but ours do not do that, so it's not something that I have a whole lot of experience with. Um, but I would say leash for sure 
and if you do some sort of obedience training you'll probably be able to get a handle on it that way as well I think you already answered the one where someone said, where did you get the sleeping buds? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I search it. It seems to just be, have to do with food. Oh, not the really ASMR? Sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I guess I'd have to actually watch one of them or something. I don't yes. watch much. Sherry, like, the CBD oil is working for Lotus. Very, very much so. It's not helping with his reactiveness at all, but it's helping with his anxiety a huge amount. Um, so we highly recommend the CBD oil. Is that somehow linked somewhere? No, because no. I don't know where that came from. Okay. Where did you get that from? You got that from Honest okay. Paul's is the company. Um, that is it on I, Amazon? Or no, um, I don't know. I would have to look if it's on Amazon. What is the biggest German Shepherd you have ever seen? So I've not... I don't know that I've ever seen one bigger than Enzo in person. However, I have talked to people through YouTube and Instagram who have ones that weigh like 130 pounds. So that's the biggest I've ever heard of. Um, but as far as seeing one, have you ever seen one bigger than Enzo in person? In person? In person. Not a shepherd. We've seen no, other I've seen, dogs. I've seen shepherds that are taller a little bit. But not but, as dense. Yeah, I mean it nothing like they don't look bigger than him they're just taller yeah you know um but he's like longer and stuff yeah and i've seen some that are longer but it's still just not yeah and is very well-rounded <laughs> yeah he's a big boy um let's see how can i stop my dog from eat eating other dogs poop that's like a weird phase that they go through. It'll stop eventually. Um, I know there's like supplements that you can give them that will make them it's not have the phase. urge um, to eat other dogs' poop, but it really is just a phase that they go through. Um, I always do like the ah, ah, ah when they're doing things that I, like if he's eating the mulch or you know picking up a rock or something like that or clapping my hands really loud and that distracts them and kind of gets them out of the trance, but it really is a phase that they just go through. Uh, let's see. So someone said ASMR is a feeling of well-being combined with a tingling sensation yeah, I in the scalp that, and, and that, down the back of the neck. Yeah, I googled that and saw that, but then when I put it in YouTube and saw dogs, it just had them eating food, so I wasn't really sure. Yeah. Let's see. Interesting. Riley said, I think ASMR is a bit niche for this channel. <laughs> oh. You guys are funny. So Aldro, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, says, I was 16 week old German Shepherd dog and just noticed a high... Gronoma, I think, on his elbow. Are you familiar? And what do you recommend we do? I'm not specifically familiar with what that is. It sounds like maybe a lump or like a skin growth of some sort. Um, I would seek out a vet. Uh, we are not vets and we are not professional trainers by any means. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it sounds like something that the vet would need to deal with. Can you Google that and see? Which one? This. What? Oh. Yeah. Um. Does that have to do with the brain? Uh, oh, it's just like fluid or blood. Yeah, I would, I would see a vet. There's too many weird things that can happen. Um, I'm always like, if there's something medically going on, it's called the vet immediately. Yeah. Um, so I would definitely get it checked out. Uh, especially since the pup is only 16 weeks old. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I would, I would be making a vet appointment as soon I as mean, possible. Worst case scenario, it costs you a hundred bucks to find out it's nothing or something. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it's nothing. But if it's not nothing, you don't want it to continue to get worse. Yeah. Um. Someone said Lotus is so cute. <laughs> 
he is he's adorable like he's such a pain and he is so hard to like deal with sometimes but like then there's other times when he's like looking at me and i'm like oh my gosh i'm gonna bite you you're so cute like he is just like his little features and like his ears are usually down um he's i just love him to death uh let's see do you ever do reviews of the doll like trick box so like how they have the things that come in the mail for the pups we don't so we don't have any subscriptions to those mm -hmm. we probably should do one no, no we're good <laughs> i have heard of them before and they have like bark box is another one where they send it like once a month or something and i feel like we, i we, we get a box every couple <laughs> weeks for the pup it's very large i have to carry it down it costs lots of hundreds of dollars chewy is very expensive for us um, I think I've looked at them before and they're kind of pricey is the problem that I have with they it. they have a ton of toys. Yeah, and our dogs have like, I don't know if you guys have seen lately, but I like- I just bought them two new ropes. Behind this fireplace, like inside of the fireplace, we don't burn fire. It's literally just filled with our toys. And then we have a similar situation underneath of the stairs downstairs where it's literally like 40 toys down there. And they play um, with most of them. And I they mean. do play with like all of them. Um, and then, like, I'm kind of weird about the treats that they that we give them. Like, I always make sure, like, they don't have certain stuff in there. Um, and they're as natural as it can be. And so, I don't know. Like, it just never really made sense for us to sign up for one of those, I feel like. Um, let's see. Anything else that you see? Um... Yeah, and so is a thick boy. <laughs> Somebody said we need to invest in a dehydrator. I'm not sure why. Um, someone said I would say the e collar causes lotuses fear. We've we have researched and dug into this, and we've talked to professionals about this. That e collar is not what causes his fear. His fear was here in the way that he is. Um, was here when we got him so he has always been like that since we have had him from day one um he hasn't had the e-collar until he was about six months old and the e-collar has made a huge difference in his reactiveness and his behavior so he actually has a positive reaction to the e-collar versus without an e-collar and like even well, plus the thing with the e-collar is when done right you teach it and then you generally don't have to it's not like we're using it all day, every day, or yeah. anything. Their e I mean, Enzo. Sometimes I forget Enzo's remote half the time. It seems yeah. like, and it's just they don't get stimulation very often at all. Now, if we're in a situation like at the park and Lotus is barking at another dog, he might get stimulation to knock it off and like let's move on and keep walking. But they're just on there as a, as a safety thing, really, in case we get in any kind of weird situation. Um, but their e collars really don't get used very often at all. Um, but if you have watched or if you go back and watch from the beginning of getting lotus and where he is now and i would guarantee you that many lotus viewers that are really go back that far but yeah. but many of the viewers the viewers that are in here will tell you how much he's improved um from a, from quite a bit ago so the e-collar actually has a positive effect on him honestly but you have to be trained on how to use it correctly too. And we 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 did four trainings on his reactiveness with the e collar. Yeah, um, we didn't even do a lot of the regular trainings. Mm -hmm. We just did a lot of specialty stuff with him about yeah. that. Yeah. So we've actually had time to research and dig a little bit deeper, and try some things. But the collar is really what what makes him better. Um, Let's see what you got, Ben. Did you answer about their coats and hot weather? No. Um, I don't think it matters. They were asking which one's better for hot weather. I don't think it matters. What do you mean? Like long coat or short coat. Oh, yeah. I don't think that... The, any type of German Shepherd has a double coat. Um, so whether it's short or long, I don't think that it's really going to matter one way or the other. I have heard that long coat German Shepherds shed less. Though, so that yeah. could be a, something that you might be interesting to you. I mean, they're just not hot weather dogs. Yeah. I was told my dog's dad was 125 pounds, so yeah, yeah. They can get fairly large. Yeah, Lotus is super sleeping right now. If you can see him on the camera, I'm sure um, he's out. That's what he would prefer to do all day. He's perfectly fine with that. Um, 
Oh yeah, a dehydrator is like it dehydrates meat. That's what Nick was talking about. Oh, I know what it does. Oh. I just didn't understand oh, yeah. like what that. We don't to... do any of that crazy stuff, but yeah. Let's see. Yeah, 200 pounds is a little much, especially for their joints. Our vet actually wants us to get loaded or Enzo down to like 99 to 100 pounds just because he does have the joint issues. Um, we've really worked on that. And he was a couple weeks ago down to like 106, but we just weighed him yesterday at the vet and he's to 108. Um, so it's, it's really hard. Um, people ask him about the names, but it's been taken care of. Um, John asks, is getting shots mandatory for the dogs? Because I think it's a waste of money, but that, but they already have had their first shots. Um, I would say in the beginning, for sure, shots are a necessity. Um, if not, they can pick up things like Parvo is very, very serious. They can, most dogs that get Parvo will die from Parvo. Um, it's really hard for them to come back from that. So I would say in the beginning, um, they need their shots for sure. Now, after a certain point, I don't know, that has to be a decision on your part, something you might want to discuss with your vet. Our pups, we, we just vaccinate them whenever it's needed to vaccinate yeah. them. We did some decent amount of research on the titer. Yeah. Is it titer? The titer test, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, you can and ultimately we just decided to to vaccinate them. Our hand was kind of forced yesterday with Enzo anyways. I kind of had to yeah. make a decision right then and there. Yeah. But it was also going to be almost a thousand dollars to get him tested. And then he could turn out that he still needs it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I just saw I'm behind you. So I just saw the cars. Yeah. Response. Uh, yeah, people are asking about the e-collar. Like, I've, and Riley answered, like, I've used it on myself. I'm not, I mean, it's like if somebody pinches you, does that hurt? Yes, it hurts. Does it actually, like, hurt you? No. It's, and that's it's, really. The way that I explain it is it's mostly a discomfort. So it's uncomfortable for a second or a split second, really, and then it's gone. The so it's enough to, to get your attention. attention. Um, and that's really all you want to do in that situation. Like I said, we don't really even frequently use ours only if we're in a situation where we have to um but if you're trained to use them correctly and they are consistently used correctly you'll have dogs like enzo and lotus um they just it has to be done the right way they can be traumatized from it if it's not done correctly which is why we never recommend to people we have people ask almost every day what brand is your e-collar and my response is always I'm not going to give you a brand of the e-collar because that's not something that we recommend. You really do need to go through training. Um, it's not as easy as just strapping on an e-collar and, and giving stimulation and inspecting the dog to know what you want him or her to do. Um, so if it's done correctly, it, it's very, very effective and you hardly ever have to use them. Um, but we get, we get a lot of questions about the e-collar. We get a lot of people that hate us for using the e-collar. Um, my response to that is it's our dogs and if we want them to wear e-collars, they're gonna wear e-collars. Um, if you don't like them, you don't have to put them on your pet. It's perfectly fine. That's just how we trained ours and yeah. it's it's been very effective for us. But the benefit is they get to run around and- Yeah, our dogs fun. get to be free. They don't have to be leashed. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't have to, to do crazy things to contain them. We can take them in public if we wanted to take them to a Reds game or, you know, downtown for Mayfest or whatever. You know I what I mean? No we- what that is, but- But, well, the people in Cincinnati yeah. do. Um, you know, we can, we can do those things with them because we have implemented it correctly. Died, so, oh yeah oh man i'm gonna need that charged um let's see um, um yeah dog beach day sounds great did you answer that one so i play with fire said your eight looks like an rs yeah it is it's because it is <laughs> um yeah but somebody was saying about the beach which would be nice yeah. We would take him to the beach if we end up on a beach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nick. And so Nick kind of touched on that. And I kind of 
skirted around that earlier because we get people that are saying that like you should attempt to use a prong collar and I was like well we have an e-collar and it's pretty effective um, and Nick kind of said what I didn't say um, so I'm glad that he said it but yeah the prong collars are actually a little bit more and I don't even think the e-collar is inhumane by any stretch of the imagination um, but the prong collar I just I don't like the way that that works and I do think that it's kind of inhumane um, so I, I would agree with Nick on that. Yeah. E-collars are great. Kids should have them. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we don't have any children. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and I mean, if they're, if they, if you have a pup and they respond well to the prong collar, like, that's great. It's just we already have something in place um, for that. And so we just, it doesn't make sense for us to kind of double up on that. The thing is, it's all, they understand what will and what will not cause them to get stimulation yeah. and that's what causes them to be traumatized is if they don't understand why they're getting the stimulation yeah so all the training has to do with making sure they understand why they're getting it yeah i think we're all caught up okay. and we did both of the drawings yeah so there's people uh one was hunter hunter wood was one i think and christina, christina williams. williams was the other yep. so if you were in here or you watched this at some point in time. Just DM us on Instagram. Yeah. With your name and address. And then we'll, what shirt you want. Yeah, we'll need to know what shirt you want. So you have to get on the merch site and look around and tell me what t-shirt you want. Um, and if you wanted to say that Enzo and Lotus on it, I'll need to know that as well. So I can stick that on there. And then hopefully we get someone of those that claim it this yeah. week. Because if not, next week we'll be doing three drawings. Yeah. Um, and then... Obviously, if you didn't win, it's ten percent off through the weekend. Oh yeah, the code's in there. Ten percent off the weekend. I think it's something Teespring's doing. It's not anything we're doing. Yeah, it's so nothing. It's just like... Teespring giving ten percent off to everybody. Yeah. Um, and then we had I think two new Patreons sign up during the live stream. Oh, awesome! I only saw the one. So yeah, um, thanks for supporting the channel. And you'll add them. Yeah, I gotta do because we had one yesterday too. Lot came in sometime yesterday. I didn't see. Okay. So yeah. So if you signed up for the Patreon, just hang tight. Um, we'll get you in the. And if you do sign up, use your Facebook email or put your Facebook email in the notes or something because that's how, that's we how I send. You. Yeah, that's how I send the Facebook invite. Yeah. And yeah. So. Yeah, because last week we had to like reach out to a couple people and and get it figured out, but it should be fine now. So it's yeah. mostly we just have no idea what we're doing. Yeah, it's it's new, so we're learning. Anything else? Um, no, mostly just talking about the collars. My throat's hurting because I've been talking for an hour and a half now, maybe a little bit longer. I know. You just take these over. I just walk away. Our very first live stream she's like what are we gonna do i don't know what we're gonna do and then she i handed her the computer and she just just went with it it wasn't <laughs> as hard as i thought it was gonna be it just i don't know i guess because we've done so much research and we have the experience that we have it's easy to talk about the things that we talk about now some things i'm like i have no idea i've never heard of that we're gonna have to research it um but for the most part it's pretty easy will's gonna zoom in on the pups lotus is out Thanks, Riley. Oh, pop up. I need to get a longer cord because I can't get to where Riley is. Thanks, Nick. I know sometimes I'm like, I don't know who would want to watch us on a live stream because it, most of the time it's so hectic. Like today we were in here late. We had technical difficulties for the first 15 minutes and then Will's up and down 50 times. The pups are not settled. I'm like, it's a hot mess here. But, I mean, that is really what real life is like for us. Um, and so I just hope that people understand that sometimes. Like, that's just kind of the way it goes. But Well, I did a test with all this because it's the two cameras that caused a lot of the issues. And I did a test yesterday and everything was fine. And then today I fired it up and it's like nothing worked. Yeah. So. Yep. So you guys are awesome we love you guys for hanging out with us and supporting you can, a lot of you guys support the channel and just you guys are awesome so anything else bubba all right i guess that's it all right bye guys all right guys we'll see you next week